Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. I've been getting asked quite a bit to do an end-to-end -end, uh, data science project, and I thought I'd do an experiment with deep learning image classification, as that's something that's relatively new to me as well. So in my normal work, I really don't do any deep learning. I don't look at too much uh, image classification in general. So this will be a fun learning experiment for both of us. In this video, I hope to show you that it doesn't have to be overwhelmingly difficult or time consuming to put together a decent data science project for your portfolio. Generally, you just have to apply pre-existing methodology to new data, and you can make some tweaks along the way to kind of really make it pop. Sometimes volume in your portfolio is just as important as having a couple really in-depth projects. If you show some diversity of thought that you're interested in a couple different areas, you don't have to overwhelm people with, with how in-depth things are. You just have to make actionable and, and pretty cool projects that, that can show people that uh, you're capable of doing small things and large things as well. The whole process of putting this project together took me about two hours and really about an hour and a half of figuring out how to get the data uh, organized, cleaned, and put together. So for this project, I used the Fast AI library to create a classifier for different types of sports balls. As you know with me, sports are always front of mind, so I thought that this would be in line and, and relevant to, uh, to my interests. Speaking of Fast AI, it's a deep learning package that's built on top of PyTorch. It's really easy uh, to use compared to some of the past deep learning frameworks that I've experimented with. And for this exercise, for this project, I directly pull a lot of the code from the Fast AI lessons, which are linked uh, in the description below. I also use Google Colab, which is really great specifically for this deep learning project. You know, when I was doing deep learning and learning it the first time around, you needed to buy a really good GPU and make sure that it was configured correctly on your computer. Uh, now with these virtual environments, you don't have to worry about configuring that. You know, Google takes care of it. They, they host the GPUs, they host everything on their platform. So you can just go in uh, and everything is installed, everything works, which is an incredible feeling. Okay, so let's get to the actual project. So when you're starting out, you should always have the end user in mind. A ball classifier, a sports ball classifier like the one I'm building, uh, could be used for someone who's new to sports. They could take a picture of the ball that's being used in play and a simple web app could tell them what sport it is and you know maybe the rules of the game or some of the the most famous players or some of the teams something like this could be really helpful if you're trying to get used to a new culture if you're trying to uh, get familiar with sports or if you're just really bored because no sports are being played and you want to uh, fill your time some other way <laughs> So the next step is generally data collection. And for this project, I tried to use some Python APIs for pulling images from Google Images, uh, but it looks like Google changed their, their, you know, some of their policies or some of their systems recently. So instead I used a Google Chrome extension that's called Fatcoon. Okay, so now let's start actually getting our hands dirty because the first step of any of these processes is actually data collection. So let's go here, let's go to Google Images. And I tried a bunch of different Python packages to actually download Google Images, and I had a lot of trouble with it. So I ended up using a Chrome extension, and I'll show you how that works here in a second. So let's just look up uh, golf balls, right? So in order to get all of the golf ball pictures that you need, you can go to Google Images. You see there's a bunch of variety here. And variety is generally good when we're building this type of model. So I downloaded this uh, extension called Fatcoon and I click here to download all of the images on this page. And here I can kind of select what images I want to include and what I don't. So this could be, you know, that's technically a golf ball. Maybe we should include it. Golf balls also come in these different types of package, uh, packaging. So let's try and have some diversity within our golf ball research here. So after that, I just click download uh, and this will all download to your downloads folder on your computer. I'll in a second show you what to actually do with that information here. So part of this process, which I think is cool and unique because it is an image process, is that through, through downloading the images this way, we're actually doing a lot of the data exploration and some of the data cleaning as well. You know, if we didn't want to include this, we could filter it out. And, you know, that is in, in, all, uh, in all truths a, a data cleaning technique is going through and looking at what what is relevant to the model here. So we can have some fun with that. We can continue to to filter these out. And for each different type of sports ball that I included, 
I actually went through and downloaded the images this way. And so let's just, uh, you know, the next step is actually loading this in and, and building this model. So why don't I show you where I got a lot of this code from? So this is a kind of the fast AI, one of the, the course lesson plans. And so they show you how to basically build all of the folder structure, do all these things. I made a couple tweaks because I'm running this through Google Co Colab. Um, and you can see all of my code again in my GitHub that I will link in the description below. So let's go to actually building this and building the folder structure. So it looks like I have to reconnect here. Um, in order to make sure that the FastAI library is up to date, we, we run this command. Uh, the exclamation point lets you write basically to the, the terminal. Um, so if you want to change the file path or any of those things, you do it through there. You want to import your normal libraries. I actually don't think I really use any of these for this, but it's good to import them any, anyway. We're going to import this Google Colab uh, drive. So this lets you actually you know, create folders and pull from folders in your Google Drive. That's one thing that the uh, course does not talk about because they're running this locally. Next, we import uh, everything from fastai.vision. Generally, this isn't an incredible practice to import everything, but since we're gonna be experimenting, we're gonna be exploring the data a little bit, I think that it's fine to do here. So now we like do this drive uh, dot mount, and that gives us access to our actual real Google Drive. Um, I've already mounted this drive, but you'll usually have to like put in a passcode. There's a link there, you click the link, you copy and paste the passcode in, uh, and, and it should work uh, pretty seamlessly. So next, this is the, uh, the path in my Google Drive where this project is hosted. And if I want to make the, like, the sports balls uh, directory, which you need, uh, I you would uncomment and run this. Next, you, you, know, you take that path with the balls and I created folders for each ball type that I have. So here I run this and all of these folders um, are just put into a list. Now I create a folder for each of the different balls. I would run that. Obviously, I've commented out because I don't want to write over all the folders that I have. So uh, after running that command, you should be able to see a folder for each ball here. And you would just basically drag and drop all of the pictures that you had, uh, for example, of American footballs um, into here. It doesn't matter what they're called. Um, the folder structure that we've used allows us to create all of the labels that are necessary uh, to create this algorithm, algorithm, which is really cool. So um, I'm going to save this path. And then here, uh, FastAI uses, uh, what's it called? It's a data blocks uh, API. And so this lets us take the path of our, of our biggest folder that has all the subfolders of all. So we're using this, um, are we, yeah, we're using this path. And we have to create a a, um, a fast AI like path variable here. So instead of doing p path and reassigning it, I could just put this in here, and it would work just fine. Um, we're using this data for our train and our test set, so we're just um, splitting it into 80-20 percent wise. We're doing some transforms on the data, so we're not just looking at it head on as is. We're doing some stretching and and flipping, etc. And we're trimming the size of each of these to 224 by 224. For most deep learning, a, a square um, a square picture makes the most sense. And the rest of this is just you know some of the backend processes. And we also want to normalize our data. So as we can see from this data variable, it has taken in all of the classes from our folder structure, which is really cool. That makes this so much easier to work with than some of the other things that I've done, the image processing, all of that stuff to make it useful in the model is taken care of uh, for you here, which is which is really nice. Now we can just kind of go through and and look at some of the data. So we can see that these are hockey pucks. This is a bowling ball, it's a volleyball, cricket, a soccer ball, and you see it was kind of scrunched. Uh, bowling ball, pool cue, cricket. So we didn't get any of like the the major sports in this one yet, but you get the idea of how how this these are all labeled already. So we just are going to run this to see all of our classes, um, how many different classes there are. So 15, uh, there's 1,001 in our training set and 250 in our test set. 
So the next thing we're going to do is build this um, convolutional uh, neural net learner. Um, and so we're going to take our data that we just built uh, up here, and we're going to run it through a uh, pre-existing model. So that's this ResNet 34. So the way this works is that ResNet 34 is already a really good uh, image classifying neural net, and it's been pre-trained on you know this this data set where you want to um, put things put images into about a thousand different categories. So what we're going to use is what's known as transfer learning. So we're going to take this this model that already works really well to classify over a thousand different things. And we're just going to train the end of it so it is specific to our data set. So this transfer learning speeds up things quite a bit rather than having to train this whole thing. And it works really, really well. That's like basically cutting edge. Uh, pretty much all of the best image classifiers out there are using transfer learning. And we're just going to print out the error rate, which is just uh, one minus the accuracy. So we're going to you know, build this learner, and then we're going to fit one cycle. So this is going to take a little bit. Um, you know, it basically goes through, and for the first pass, it's just training the end layers. The you know, basic infrastructure of this thing is staying relatively the same. Um, and so because it's already really good at recognizing certain different images. So we just want to kind of see how it, how it does at you know, recognizing uh, new things and making it specific to our use case. So as you can see, you know, we're training basically eight epic, uh, epochs, um, and we're already getting, just with the out-of-the-box model, um, in the first couple ones, you know, we're, we're looking at only 9% you know, error rate, you know, over 90% accuracy, which is really good. I mean, we, if we looked back maybe five years, uh, on an image set like this, we'd be looking at like 50-60% accuracy. Now with some of the like most elite models here, we can probably do uh, as well, if not better, than kind of a human uh, intervention or, or like a human actually looking at these things. And so we'll, we'll, as we go forward, we'll kind of go back and look and say, okay, how did this do on the ones where we, we didn't get it right, where we made errors? How did, you know, are they acceptable errors? Are they things that like I maybe probably couldn't have done as well on? Um, or are they things that, um, you know, we shouldn't be messing up on? So it looks like, you know, we got up to around 93%, which I think is really good. And so we're gonna actually save this model that we just built uh, in case we wanted to use it in the future. So if we wanna actually like, you know, build an API where people can upload pictures and, um, and this sends a response of what type of picture it is, of what type of ball, then this is what we would use here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually unfreeze this model. So before I was talking about how the whole model was, um, you know, most of it was already trained on this other data set and we were just kind of training the, the end of the model. This allows us to retrain kind of the whole model pipeline uh, which could be really useful if we want to make this very specific to our use case. So we're just going to try this out to see if we can do a little bit better um, than this very low error rate already. You know, I've experimented with this a little bit, actually a lot. I tried to tune this pretty well, and I couldn't do too much better than 94%, than but we're going to see what we can do here. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to find kind of the, uh, the optimal learning rates, and that's a parameter we can pass to this model to hopefully improve it. So this is going to actually, um, you know, look at the the loss for the the different learning rates that it uses, and we'll try and adjust the learning rate uh, rate down here to kind of maximize our our effectiveness. And you will see if we can improve. As you can see, like down here, I was still getting um, just about the same, but there is a little bit of randomness. Actually, there's a lot of randomness in this, and uh, um, we're going to try and actually improve upon this a little bit here. So in general, we want to choose a learning rate that's pretty steep. So it looks like um, right here there's a pretty, um, a pretty steep drop down and then there's also a steep drop down down here. So let's try and just do, we'll kind of use this 1E6 um, as a first slice. So this trains the first half of the model. We want it to train slower in the beginning and kind of faster at the end. Um, so let's change this to like 1E, uh, 1E4. 
and then weighted decay is a normalization feature. So let's see if we can actually do better by training it a little bit further. If we can't, not a big deal. I think point um, a loss of you know 0 0.68 or you know 93 percent ish is, is really good. So it looks like our learning rate got a little bit worse. Let's see if we can if if it ends up getting better, um, which would be really cool. Uh, so it doesn't doesn't end up getting better. We might have actually overtrained a little bit. As you can kind of see here, our training loss and our valid loss is pretty close. Here, our training loss is um, is a lot lower than our validation loss. So, you know, maybe that's not the best approach here. But let's take a look. We're going to look at the learning rate again, and depending on what this looks like, we might just leave it. We might um, we might not want to make any more adjustments on this model. It might be about as good as it could be. Uh, especially with the amount of data that we have. You know, we're looking at a thousand images, but that's less than a hundred of each different ball type. So, you know, maybe if we had more data, we'd be able to parse things out. And a lot of these images, I, I didn't clean it that well. I wanted it to be a little bit messy so that when we tried, uh, you know, different balls later on, maybe there were, there were balls that were moving or uh, or they weren't, or they were coupled with like a, a, a shot, or you know, like a, uh, on goal from hockey, or like a tennis forehand, or something. We might still be able to recognize them. So as you can see this is a lot less steep than the previous one up here was in those areas, and you know, in a perfect world, we get a pretty flat line. Uh, but I think this is pretty good for now. So let's um, let's save this second model, but we're gonna actually use the first one. So we're gonna learn dot load uh, model one underscore 34. So this 34 is we're using that rednet, ResNet 34 model. There's also a ResNet 50, but this one, uh, I compared them, they have basically identical results. And you know, ResNet 50 also just takes a, a little bit longer because it is a bigger model. So we're gonna you know, build this classification report and then we're gonna plot this confusion matrix. So uh, let's see if I can zoom in, there we go. So as we can see, we did really well. You know, lacrosse balls, um, you know, seem to have some issues. Uh, soccer balls had a little bit of issues with volleyballs, which I think that's pretty understandable. Rugby and volleyball had one or two, and then basketball and volleyball had some issues. So it looks like we had more issues with volleyball than pretty much anything else. Um, and, you know, volleyball kind of looks like a lot of these other balls, so that's not su super surprising. So let's actually look at the some of the ones we got wrong, the ones that we had the biggest issue with. So this one is, is like, you know, not super shocking. So this is a pool cue, uh, the cue ball, but it looks a lot like a lacrosse ball to me. If you were to say, Ken, you know, could you compare this and, you know, I, I would probably get that one wrong or, or you know, it's a coin flip there. This one, uh, I have a little Easter egg in here. You know, I, I threw in Dragon Balls because I thought that was funny. Uh, because of the orange color, I could see that, you know, this one could probably be gotten wrong. The, the uh, hockey pucks and lacrosse balls, I guess a lot of the lacrosse balls I used were different colors, so that might be able to explain some of this. I don't really understand this one. Um, soccer, lacrosse, maybe there were more pictures of soccer balls in action with grass. Um, and then, uh, Pool balls again and dragon balls. Uh, a lot of the pool balls were are similar size and they were put in pictures together. So maybe that's uh, an explanation there. So you know, overall, I think that that these losses, these misses, are pretty acceptable. I still wanted to try a couple um, a couple different ones that I just pulled that were outside of the set to kind of show you how this would work. So let's look at this one. Um, we have a golf ball, kind of with a golf club and some grass. I thought that, you know, obviously the golf ball's front and center, but there's some kind of noise in there. Uh, let's see how this model really did here. So as we can see, the category that it classifies it as is golf. I think that's pretty good. Let's look at uh, maybe another one here. So we have a kind of tennis image. Do, do, do. This one's kind of big, so it might take a little longer. So we have the tennis ball here. As you can see, it's a close up on the court. Um, let's see how this one did. Come on, baby. Again, category tennis, so we're, we're two for two on these. And then the last one, um, again, not a sport, but kind of fun little Easter egg I was, as I was fooling around. I thought we'll look at a Dragon Ball. 
if you're not familiar, Dragon Ball was an anime uh, that was pretty popular when I was growing up. So, let's see here. Oops. And it looks like it misclassified this one here. So, you know, that's something that, um, you know, we, we recognize, okay, this could look kind of like a, a pool cue. It's a, a pool ball. It's very normalized in size and shape. So, you know, if we were to retrain this model, we could potentially look at some uh, specifics of, um, of these things and, and try to improve upon that. So, you know, that's, that's basically it for the model. I've, I've shown how you can put in new inputs and, and actually make them work. If you wanted to take this another step, you could build perhaps like a Flask app or you can serve something up through AWS and make it so that, um, you know, someone could actually upload an image and it would respond with what type of ball it was. I think that that's kind of fun and cool. Uh, and that, that again, is that next level to, um, to making a project really stand out. I think in general, using deep learning, doing something with image classification is, is a plus. It's something that can set you apart. Um, this, this historically has been really intimidating, but with some of these new packages, uh, with Google Colab, with a lot of these things, um, it's, it's become relatively easy. And you know, I, I put this together obviously very quickly, uh, and this is something that, that I believe every, every one of you can do. Uh, if you want more information on this, I really recommend taking the, the Fast AI course on deep learning. They, they break this all down. They do a lot of similar examples. And uh, I think it's a, a great place to, to learn about these next steps. They have a very similar uh, learning philosophy as I do, is you know, do projects, get your hands dirty. Um, if you know how this works in code and in practice, you'll be able to eventually learn all of the math behind it as well. So I would take some notes there. I would just make sure that you're, uh, that you're learning in that way and that you're, you're practicing. And you know, if I was really motivated, I could do you know, three of these projects on three back-to-back -back days. Uh, I could even do four on four back-to-back -back days and have uh, you know, a really well-filled out portfolio. Obviously, I've had some experience with this. Um, it'll probably be a little you know, rougher for other people starting out, but that's part of the process. You know, I got a bunch of errors. I, I, I had to figure out how uh, to download these images when a lot of these uh, you know, uh, APIs were not working. And I believe uh, that you guys can do that as well. That's part of this problem-solving approach. That's part of, um, of learning is that this hard feedback, uh, you know, every time that you get uh, something, something wrong and it doesn't work, you do get an error message. And that is some feedback. It tells you what could potentially be wrong. So I really recommend uh, reading those and just trying to power through it and get this working, even if it's not working immediately. So I really hope that this was helpful. It shows you um, how to actually put this together. I'll also put this in my GitHub I'll actually do a decent readme, which I know is something I've kind of been slacking on, so I'm gonna try and do better at, at putting better readmes in my GitHub. Uh, but that should show you how, how this process should work um, and how in practice um, you can build a project like this and put it on your portfolio. Uh, in some future videos, I'll talk about how you, you talk about your data science portfolio in an, in an interview, how you put it in your resume. Uh, but for now, I think that this is a really good starting place uh, and hopefully I'll post some other projects like this as I little, learn a little bit more about deep learning and I, I get some, some new exposure and some new ideas. So as usual, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was as helpful as it could be and a good luck on your data science journey.